Hi everyone and welcome to Prague. My name is Valerie and today I'm going to show you what you can see in this beautiful city in one day. Let's go! Prague is 496 kilometers square and has 1.3 million people living in the city. But the most important part is this one, Prague Historical City Center, protected by UNESCO. This area consists of the New Town, the Old Town, the Jewish Quarter, the Lesser Town, the Castle District and the Visegrad. In our video we suggest a route that first goes to the Old Town and the Jewish Quarter, then the Lesser Town, Castle District and Prague Castle and finally the New Town and Visegrad. Along the way we will give you tips on what to see and recommendations for our favorite restaurants and cafes. And in the end of the video you will learn where you can hang out during your evening and night in Prague. First thing you will need is probably a breakfast. Then Knott's makes great pancakes, Municipal House Cafe opens at 9 am and you can get a typical egg breakfast there. Or if you would maybe just like some coffee and croissant, you can hop in to Paul. We suggest these places because they're close to the starting point of our one day adventure. Well now you've got that caffeine in your body and it's time to use it. Start your day of exploring here, in front of the municipal house and the powder tower. This is where once the medieval entrance to the old town used to be, and that's how the medieval merchants would arrive as well. These streets is where the defense moat that was protecting old town used to be located. Thankfully the moat isn't here anymore, otherwise the parking would be even more difficult. And it's time for us to enter. After you enter Old Town, you will be walking down the street called Celetna. This street is part of a longer route we call the Royal Way, which in Middle Ages was used for the coronation ceremony, connecting the Powder Tower and the Prague Castle. It's also where bakers used to work. Nowadays, people who work here are interested in a different kind of dough. On the way, you will see the beautiful cubist building that we call the House of the Black Madonna. At the House of the Black Madonna, go left and walk through the former Fruits Market. Here you will see the Estates Theatre, famous for the premiere of Mozart's Don Giovanni, and the Charles University, famous for being the oldest university to the north of the Alps. That sounds like we're bragging. And we are. You are absolutely right. Continue walking through the streets of the old town and maybe even get lost. Make friends, take silly pictures, have fun in other words. But do not forget to find your way to Milan Trichova street and reach the old town square, the heart of Prague. Here you will see the beautiful Gothic teen church and another two monuments of Jan Hus and Marian Kolm. And of course the iconic astronomical clock. Every hour on the hour, the clock has a show. Two small blue windows above the upper big dial open and the procession of 12 apostles starts. It gets quite busy here, but it's definitely worth seeing. Just be careful with pickpockets. Next, find the house of the stone bell and take this street near the teen church. It will take you to Ungeld, historically one of the most significant places of the old town. This is where medieval merchants were taxed before they were selling their goods and that's where they partied, waiting for all the tax procedures to be finished. Okay, you see that tower? That's the St. James Church, our next stop. Here you can see a real human hand hanging on a chain. Yep, that's what they would do to you in the Middle Ages if you were trying to steal. Fortunately, they do not do that now, otherwise Prague would not have any taxi drivers. To find the thief's hand, enter the church and then turn to your right side and there on top of the wall you will see the hand hanging on a chain. Anyways, it's time for sweets and coffee. Tardonica side, you can visit the most popular coffee place in this neighborhood called the Bake Shop or this French inspired one. If you want to try traditional Czech bakeries, this one is your only bet around this area. They probably do not have any tables inside, so you can only get pastries to go. Coffee break is over, Jewish Quarter next. So what to do here? Check out the statue of Franz Kafka. Next to it, see the beautiful Spanish synagogue. Marvel at the prices in Paris Street. If you're a millionaire and you're watching this, you can shop here and send us donations through PayPal for being nice and making this video. See the old new synagogue and the old Jewish cemetery. Our next stop is the old Jewish cemetery, which is not for free. So if you don't want to spend money on a ticket, you can either see it from here when you're standing in front of the old new synagogue 
or through this window over here in front of Rudolfinum Concert Hall. After passing by the Jewish cemetery, you can also peek at the Rudolfinum Concert Hall. And the number two Prague must see site is waiting for you the main train station. Joking, it's Charles Bridge, of course. This beautiful bridge was built by Charles IV, our most favored king, who made Prague the seat of the Holy Roman Emperor in the 14th century. Don't forget to take a photo and let's cross the bridge. There are a lot of statues that decorate the bridge today. If you would like to know more about them, you can watch another video that we've made. We will link it in the description. But from Charles Bridge, you can see our future stop, the Tsin Tower. Congratulations! Half of your Prague exploration is finished. Now it's time for a reward in the form of good Czech lunch. That means beer and lots of calories. There are multiple places you can check out here. Lokal u Bile Kuželky or u Glaubicu. We also like u Tri Stoleti. And what are traditional Czech dishes? There are many, but if you are here only for one day, let's keep it simple and strike at the core. Svichkova, Czech goulash, roasted duck or fried cheese, if you are a vegetarian, are the foods that you should try. And of course beer, the only true religion in this country. Try Pilsner or Dark Kozel if you can, but any Czech beer is great. By the way, most sites that we've covered so far you can see with us on our free tour around Prague's old town. Check it out in the description. Now you are full and you would probably like to take a nap. But not today. Today you are exploring Prague, so let's go to Malastrana. Malastrana can be translated as a lesser town or little quarter. This beautiful area is very precious because it is one of the most historically preserved areas in Prague. The whole of Malastrana is a monument, so make sure to walk through as many streets as possible and see the beautiful Renaissance Baroque and Classicist palaces that you will meet on the way. The sites you should definitely see here are the John Lennon Wall, the Infant Jesus of Prague and Kampa Park with the statues of babies from David Czerny. Afterwards, hop on the funicular at Uya station and go two stops up to the Petrin Lookout Tower. We, by the way, also made a video about the funicular. A lot of free time in 2020, hey? You'll find the link in the description, as always. Petrin Tower is a copy of the Eiffel Tower and was built in Prague only a few years after the Parisian one. If you wanted to take a photograph of the historical city center and have it all in front of you, this is where you should go. It costs 9 euros if you want to take the elevator and 6 euros if you don't mind walking up the steps. I'll be honest with you, I'm lazy and I've never taken the steps. Or if you prefer a free view, you can get a pretty good one from Strauf Monastery, which is our next stop anyways. Or you can come here below Strauf Monastery, it is for free and it offers great view spots as well. Here you can not only enjoy the beautiful view of Prague, but you can also taste beer from its microbrewery. Or if you don't like beer and would rather have a coffee, right next to the monastery is this beautiful coffee place. We go here even when we are not at work, because mmm, good coffee, mmm, tasty cakes. Next, let's explore the castle district. The name of this area comes from the fact that it was connected to the Prague castle. Here we recommend to see the Chernin Palace, one of the largest Baroque palaces in Prague, and Loreto, a pilgrimage site where you can find a copy of Santa Casa, the holy hut, the place where Virgin Mary was told she will be the mother of Jesus. And no, it's not for free, but worth visiting for sure. As an alternative to this paid visit, we can suggest going through Novi Svet, which we also have a video about. How convenient. Anyway, next thing you shouldn't miss is the Haratchani Square with its luxurious palaces. You can see here the beautiful Renaissance Schwarzenberg Palace or the Archbishop's Palace and finally, next to Starbucks, you can snap another picture of Prague view. You can skip the Starbucks, far from a Czech experience. And we arrive to our next stop, Prague Castle, which is right behind me. According to Guinness Book of Records, Prague Castle is the largest castle complex in the world. So let's have a look at what you can see inside. The general area of the Prague Castle is open for free. 
so if you are on a budget, you can just walk from one end of the castle to the other. You can also visit the Royal Gardens and the Southern Gardens free of charge if you are traveling here between April and October. If you want to go inside of the buildings, we recommend getting the 10 euro ticket so you can see the four most important places of the Prague Castle. The St. Vitus Cathedral, the Old Royal Palace, St. George's Basilica and the Golden Lane. To see these, you need at least two to three hours and mind that these buildings close at 5 p.m. in summer, except the Golden Lane, which remains open and free of charge. So plan accordingly. Possibly skip some of the parts previously mentioned in the video, like the Petrin Tower ride and the Castle District. After you are done with the Prague Castle, we recommend taking the tram number 17 and visiting Visegrad, the former castle which was remodeled into a military fortress. It's a really nice area to walk around and take more beautiful pictures of Prague from. You can have dinner in the restaurant Ukroka and finish your day either on Naplovka, a popular local hangout spot full of bars and boats, or take a walk around Newtown and visit Charles Square and Wenceslas Square. Just do yourself a favor and avoid people trying to sell you something there. Whatever it is, it's not gonna be good, trust me. For the evening slash night, you can visit the traditional black light theater of Yiji Sernets. Take a boat ride, the best one according to TripAdvisor is Jazz Boat, or visit one of the jazz bars, like Umaleho Glena or Jazz Dog. Of course, you can also party. For that, we recommend all of these spots. Busy day! If you really managed to see everything that we showed you in the video, you have managed to see what we consider some of the most important sites Prague has. Let us know in the comments if you liked our recommendations. Oh, and yes, subscribe and like this video. Cheers!